Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video we will talk about acute poisonings with pesticides, mushrooms and carbon monoxide. Acute poisoning is a serious medical condition that requires immediate attention and intervention. It is a relatively common occurrence in clinical practice and healthcare professionals must be familiar with the different types of poisoning to provide appropriate care. In this video, we will focus on three types of acute poisoning pesticides, mushroom poisoning, and carbon monoxide intoxication. Pesticide poisoning is one of the most common types of poisoning worldwide, with many cases occurring in developing countries. Pesticides are chemical substances used to control pests, weeds and other organisms that can harm crops, livestock and humans. Exposure can occur through ingestion, inhalation or skin contact. The symptoms of pesticide poisoning depend on the type and quantity of pesticide involved. Mild symptoms include nausea, vomiting and headaches, while severe cases can result in seizures, respiratory failure and death. Also important to keep in mind is that the time it takes for symptoms of pesticide intoxication to develop can vary depending on the type of pesticide and the level of exposure. In some cases, Symptoms can develop within a few minutes of exposure, while in other cases it may take several hours or even days for symptoms to appear. Immediate symptoms of pesticide intoxication may include skin irritation, eye irritation and respiratory distress. Other symptoms may include headaches, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, muscle weakness and seizures. In some cases, symptoms may not appear until days or even weeks after exposure. For example, exposure to some organophosphate pesticides can cause a delayed neurological syndrome, which can lead to symptoms such as confusion, memory loss and depression several weeks after exposure. Some of the types of pesticides that can lead to intoxication include organophosphates. These pesticides are commonly used in agriculture and can cause acute poisoning through inhalation, ingestion or skin absorption. Symptoms of organophosphate poisoning include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, headaches, seizures and respiratory failure. Second, carbamates. Carbamate pesticides are used to control insects and pests in crops and gardens. They can cause acute poisoning through inhalation, ingestion or skin absorption. Symptoms of carbamate poisoning include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, headaches, muscle weakness and respiratory failure. Pyrethroids. Pyrethroids are synthetic versions of pyrethrines, which are derived from chrysanthemum flowers. They are commonly used in household insecticides and exposure can cause symptoms such as itching, burning and stinging. In severe cases, pyrethroid poisoning can cause seizures, respiratory failure and death. Fourth, paraquat. Paraquat is a highly toxic herbicide that is commonly used in agriculture to control weeds. It is highly toxic and can cause acute poisoning through ingestion or skin absorption. Symptoms of paraquat poisoning include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain and lung damage. Fifth, Glyphosate. Glyphosate is a widely used herbicide that has been linked to cancer and other health problems. It is commonly used in agriculture and home gardening. Exposure to glyphosate 
can cause skin irritation, respiratory problems and gastrointestinal problems. The treatment of pesticide poisoning depends on the type and severity of the poisoning. In general, the first step is to remove the person from the source of the poisoning and seek medical attention immediately. Here are some common treatments for pesticide poisoning. First, decontamination. If the person is still contaminated with the pesticide, it is important to remove the contaminated clothing and wash the skin thoroughly with soap and water. Eye irrigation may also be necessary. Second, supportive care. Supportive care is the mainstay of treatment for pesticide poisoning. This includes measures such as providing oxygen, monitoring vital signs, and treating symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Third, antidotes. In some cases, antidotes may be available to reverse the effects of the pesticide. For example, atropine is an antidote for organophosphate poisoning, and pralidoxime is an antidote for carbamate poisoning. These antidotes are typically administered in the hospital setting. Fourth, dialysis. In severe cases of pesticide poisoning, dialysis may be necessary to remove the pesticide from the blood. And last, long-term care. Long-term care may be necessary for people who have been severely poisoned by pesticides. This may include rehabilitation and ongoing medical monitoring to address any long-term health effects. Prevention is the best way to avoid pesticide poisoning. People who work with pesticides should receive appropriate training on how to handle and use them safely. And they should always use protective equipment such as gloves and respirators. In addition, people who live in areas where pesticides are used should take appropriate precautions to minimize their exposures such as staying indoors during spraying and washing fruits and vegetables thoroughly before eating them. Mushroom poisoning is another type of poisoning that can occur when a person ingests poisonous mushrooms. Mushroom poisoning is rare, but it can be lethal, with some cases resulting in liver and kidney failure. Mushroom poisoning can occur after collecting mushrooms in the forest or purchasing them from an individual who is not aware of the toxic nature of the mushroom. Generally, symptoms of mushroom poisoning include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain and liver and kidney damage. The time it takes for symptoms of mushroom poisoning to develop can vary depending on the type of mushroom and the amount ingested. In some cases, symptoms may develop within a few hours of ingestion, while in other cases, it may take several days for symptoms to appear. Some of the early symptoms of mushroom poisoning may include stomach pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and cramping. These symptoms may be followed by more serious symptoms, such as liver and kidney damage, seizures, and hallucinations. In some cases, the symptoms of mushroom poisoning may not appear until several hours or days after ingestion. This is because some types of poisonous mushrooms contain toxins that can take time to build up in the body before causing symptoms. Early detection and treatment are crucial for patients with mushroom poisoning, as there is no specific antidote for most types of mushroom toxins, and an intoxication can lead to long-term organ damage. There are many types of mushrooms that can cause intoxication, but some are more commonly associated with poisoning than others. Here are some of the most common types of mushrooms that can lead to intoxication. The first, Amanita phalloides, also known as the death cap, this mushroom is responsible for most mushroom poisoning deaths worldwide. It contains toxins that can cause liver failure and death. 
the second one, Pyromitra esculenta, also known as the false moral. This mushroom contains a toxin that can cause vomiting, diarrhea, and seizures. The third one, Psilocyb cubensis. This mushroom contains the psychoactive compound psilocybin, which can cause hallucinations and altered perception. The fourth is the inocybe species. Some species of inocybe mushrooms contain the toxin muscarin, which can cause symptoms such as sweating, salivation, and diarrhea. And the last one I want to mention, Clitosyb de albata. Also known as the ivory funnel, this mushroom contains the toxin muscarine and can cause symptoms such as vomiting, diarrhea, and sweating. It is important to note that while some mushrooms are commonly associated with poisoning, it is difficult to identify mushrooms based on their appearance alone. Therefore, it is recommended to never consume wild mushrooms unless you are an expert in mushroom identification or have purchased them from a trusted source. In case of mushroom poisoning, it is important to seek medical attention immediately. The last type of intoxication we will talk about is carbon monoxide intoxication. Carbon monoxide intoxication is a type of poisoning that occurs when a person inhales high levels of carbon monoxide gas. Carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless gas that is produced by burning fuels such as wood, gas and oil. Carbon monoxide poisoning can lead to headaches, nausea, dizziness and confusion. In severe cases, carbon monoxide poisoning can cause loss of consciousness, seizures and even death. Carbon monoxide poisoning can be prevented by ensuring proper ventilation in living spaces and avoiding the use of gas-powered equipment in enclosed spaces. The time it takes for symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning to develop can vary depending on the level of exposure and the duration of exposure. In some cases, symptoms may develop within minutes of exposure to high concentrations of carbon monoxide, while in other cases, it may take several hours or even days for symptoms to appear. The early symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning can be mild and may be mistaken for other illnesses, such as the flu. These symptoms may include headache, dizziness, weakness, nausea, vomiting and confusion. As the concentration of carbon monoxide in the body increases, symptoms may become more severe and may include chest pain, difficulty breathing, seizures and loss of consciousness. The treatment for carbon monoxide poisoning depends on the severity of the symptoms and the concentration of carbon monoxide in the blood. If you suspect carbon monoxide poisoning, it is important to immediately move to an area with fresh air and call emergency services. Once medical help arrives, they will likely administer high flow oxygen through a mask or breathing tube to help remove carbon monoxide from the body. This treatment can continue until the carbon monoxide levels in the blood return to normal, which can take several hours to days. In severe cases, hyperbaric oxygen therapy may be used to speed up the removal of carbon monoxide from the body. This treatment involves breathing pure oxygen in a pressurized chamber to help increase the amount of oxygen in the blood and speed up the removal of carbon monoxide. It is important to seek medical attention even if symptoms seem mild, as carbon monoxide poisoning can be difficult to detect and can lead to serious health complications if left untreated. Additionally, once treated, it is important to identify the source of the carbon monoxide and address the problem to prevent further incidents of poisoning. In conclusion, Acute poisoning is a serious medical emergency that requires prompt recognition and treatment. Pesticide poisoning, mushroom poisoning and carbon monoxide intoxication are just a few examples of the different types of acute poisoning that can occur in clinical practice. 
healthcare professionals should be familiar with the signs and symptoms of these types of poisoning and the appropriate treatment methods to provide optimal care to patients. It is also essential to educate the public on the prevention of acute poisoning to reduce the incidence of these life-threatening conditions. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. If you would like to see more videos on toxicology, please let us know in the comments. Thank you very much and hopefully see you again in the next video.